Hello and welcome back. Today we have the amazing Heather Doran here and she is going to be chatting about her experience. First of all, what she does, the amazing work that she's doing in the world, and then her experience with coaching, what happened when she came in, what were some of the things that she did. So welcome Heather. Thank you. So tell us kind of like what you do, like your background and what you're all about. Um, Yeah, so I am an accountant. I started out in the accounting world when I was like 22. And I pretty much just um, climbed the corporate ladder. And I got to a place in my accounting career where I, you know, I kind of like done all the things. And I was like, wow, this is it. This is, this is what we all like waited for in the corporate (laughs) world, uh, which I think so many of us can relate to. And so I started my own business thinking like, okay, sure, like, this is the next step. Um, and that, you know, as we all know, like, you know, there's always another step. And so then I started to learn about like different uh, kind of intuition, um, spiritual practices, uh, just getting more closer to your money. Um, you know, just like the things that nobody wants to talk about when it comes to money. So, uh, my business now pretty much revolves around the practical side of money. So, you know, doing the financial statement, doing the bookkeeping, but then also the, uh, I guess, underlying things when it comes to your money, like your money beliefs, your money story, why you're not making the money you want, um, and a little bit of, uh, woo spiritual work in there and using your intuition. So that's pretty much what I do. Yeah. So what was it like? Like, what were you going through before you started working with us? Like, I mean, if you can remember back, I think it was like I, over a year and a half ago by now. Yeah. So um, I was one of the first things that I realized I had a free coaching session. It was like a two hour intensive. And I remember getting off the intensive and I was like, there's no way I'm doing any of that. <laughs> I don't know if I've shared that with you. <laughs> I had no idea. No. <laughs> yeah. I was like, there's no way. <laughs> I'm doing (laughs) any of that. Um, Yeah. So a lot of it was, it was just like what at the time I considered like very like high level strategy type stuff. Um, It was, I I was really marketing to people that didn't really know they had a problem yet. And so that was one of the big aha, but I couldn't get my brain to a place to like leap over to, okay, because these are the people that I've like always been talking to how to then now talk to people who like know they have a problem, but then not only that, but like speak to them at a, at a higher level. Like they know they have a problem and they also are seeking this type of help. So that was a big part of where I was at. Yeah. And I think your packages were completely different. Like if I remember correctly, your whole business model was different. Your packages were different. Like your, yeah, there was definitely some mindset around like what you were doing and running the business. But for me, like what I remember the most was those packages were just unsustainable. And then the, like everything in terms of the marketing, like it was, you were doing a lot, like you were posting on social media. I remember you messaging me even before this, like wanting me to work with you. And, and like, I remember all of that and you were working so hard, but it just was like not working because you were marketing to people in the wrong phase. Right. 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 Um, it, it was, I mean, struggle. I don't like to use that word, but I mean, struggles like kind of an understatement. I was getting to the place of basically burnout. Like I was just, I would, I would just get up like every Monday morning and just cry because I couldn't get myself to like do as much as I wanted to on the weekends. And um, so, I mean, not only like was I struggling in my business, but like I was struggling personally to really make an impact and do more things and help people. And I just really had gotten to a place where I was really struggling. Yeah, totally. So why did you decide to work with us? So that you did the free intensive. I think you won the challenge or something. I did, yeah. You got the free intensive. Yeah, so I mean, like you said, like I was showing up and doing all the things. This is the thing. So before I started working with Marianna and her team, like I was doing all the things. I was showing up. I was, you know, like she said, I was posting on social media. Um, I was reaching out to people. Like I was doing all the things. And 
um, I did, I won the challenge and I got to this place where I was like, okay, so I'm doing all the things, but it's not working. And so I was just really looking for a place of, you know, I think what I was lacking is that somebody to kind of come in and like basically stop telling me what to do, if that makes sense. <laughs> so really like to encourage me to lean into my intuition, lean into, you know, what I really wanted for my business. I think that was kind of the biggest aha that I've had like over the last several, you know, months is that, you know, to stop doing what seems like the right thing to do, which I think is like the biggest um, difference that your program has. It's not like, oh, well, you have to use Instagram and you have to use Facebook and you have to use whatever platform, but it's the underlying business model of why are you doing the thing? Um, yeah. So you also identify with more of the rebel personality. So having structure that you can mold and meld with, right, was really important to you. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. The rebel personality is mine. Um, I remember I was actually did a, one of your other free challenges and you introduced me to Gretchen Rubinson or something. Yeah. Like Gretchen Rubin. Yeah. Yeah. The four, the four tendencies. Oh my gosh. Like I laughed through that like whole book. So my husband is totally the questioner. Um, and, and I found it funny. I was like, so the questioner doesn't like to be questioned. <laughs> and so it was hilarious just re listening to her book and then realizing that like the rebel, like immediately, like when you tell the rebel, you should be doing this. They're just like, no, I'm not going to do that because I mean, I wanted to do it before you told me that I should be doing it. So that definitely was a thing. That's, that's a thing that I still, I still do. Um, so I think that's why this program has worked well for me is that it's, it, it gives you the, the layout of like, okay, you can use these different things, but then you create it the way you want to create it for your business, for the direction you want to go for yourself. And so I think that's what really makes this different is that it's not like, oh, so I'm going to tell you the 10 steps to, um, you know, create an Instagram or whatever. It, it, it goes so much like deeper than that. It, it touches on the, the actual underlying business principles. And why, right? Yeah. yeah. So you can construct it yourself. Um, Which is what I needed. Like I, I didn't need somebody to just give me this cookie cutter thing. Right. Because I wouldn't have the business that I have now if it was for that. I mean, really like the whole like integrating the, the accounting and the numbers and like the intuition and all of that, like that's something I would have never done had I not, you know, been in the space of like, yes, you can do that. It doesn't have right. to look like everybody else. That, yeah, that was a big one. And for you, there was a point where you were trying to do it like the traditional way. And then you would like rebel against yourself and like try to do oh <laughs> like burn all those bridges. You're like, no, I'm only doing intuition. And I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was definitely a battle like personally that went on there, um, you know, because I was like really afraid to like really just step into both like spaces and be able to like mirror, like merge the two together. That was definitely a scary thing for me. Um, so I really had to work on, you know, the things about like being seen and showing up and like, what is my family going to think? And, you know, all those things um, and really, you know, just step into that space. So that's definitely something that we've worked a lot on. Yeah. And I can say like, I went through that myself between like the part of me that's like super fierce and like swears and like just runs around like you know when I was in the hospital administration it was like telling I was running around telling doctors and CEOs what to do like that was literally my job <laughs> and um so there's that part of me but then there's like the super loving mom side that also was the nurse right so like there's both sides of me so I've I've totally done the internal battle between two opposing forces and like I feel like that's why I was able to coach you through that and see it in you when you were like, you know, burning bridges on one side <laughs> or the other. Um, yeah. All right. So when you like, what was it like once you finally joined your first month or week? Like, what was that like? I don't exactly remember. I do remember that I finally got on the bandwagon of what it felt like to have someone help me in my business 
um, one of the first things that I did was learn about hiring an intern. And so I brought an intern on to help me in the business. And I remember like when I brought her on, I was just, it was like an epiphany, like came over me like, wow, I can have other people do stuff. And I like teach them and train them. And they are super appreciative. And, you know, it's that level of impact that we talk about. The level of impact is like being able to give her place to learn a place to, you know, do more things. She was super appreciative. So um, that was huge for me too, is just being able to step in that space of like getting outsourcing basically. So just getting support in the business. Yeah. And I think the first month, if I remember correctly, you were like shocked at how present I was in the group. Like I remember you, oh, yeah. that. you were like, this doesn't even feel like a group program. Are you sure this is, I'm in the right place? <laughs> like, because you had worked privately with the coach and you were like, you're more present than other times that I've been in coaching. So t- can you p- explain that to people? Cause I think people think it's a group program. So Mariana must like not really be in there. Yeah. So that's definitely been uh, a big thing. So I, I actually ended up like upgrading my package to get like one-on-one time, but then I never signed up for one-on-one time because I ended up always <laughs> getting support, like on the group coaching calls, or like I would get a lot of support from Um, you and your team. And I just was like, I was getting the support, you know, like the questions were getting answered, I would go through. And like, if I'd have a question about like, where's this training or this, that and the other. So it was just, it was very, it was just very different. Like I know, like I've had personal one on one coaching. And I always felt like I didn't want to like bother them. And there's always this like weird space of like bothering them. So like for me, it was easier to just go into the group and just ask like general questions thinking like, okay, well maybe other members, cause typically like groups, like other members will answer questions. And so what I found is that yes, other members did answer questions, but then Mariana and her team was showing up and answering questions, pointing me in the direction like, Hey, here's a training. Um, and then also like you created trainings based on like where we were at in the time of our business or like what like the general need was. And so it really does like when the program says like an A to Z look of like running a business, it really does have a lot of stuff in it. It's really like you think about a library and you're like, oh, I like have a book on, you know, how to do this or how to do that. There's the whole library of like how to do these things in business um, in the members area. So that's been amazing. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So what was one thing that like pleasantly delighted you or surprised you about our program? I think probably like the team interaction, like the team trainings that we got. So I know um, early on, there was a couple of team trainings that, that you guys did. Um, And, uh, we would get on with like the different team members and like, so you might be working with a different team member on like how to do SEO or how to um, create a YouTube video and, you know, whatever the training was or like how to, you know, talk to clients or, you know, so these were things that you were working on with your team. And so then your team would develop these processes like for your business and then your team would come in and then, be able to teach us on these different areas of like, Hey, this is what I learned. And so what it ended up doing was really helping me see kind of the full circle of, you know, this is what it kind of looks like to bring a team member on and then to be able to, you know, teach your team, okay, this is how you do the thing. And then be able to, you know, go through the whole cycle of this is what it looks like. And then, you know, use that team member to empower, you know, your group program or your clients to be able to show them. So it was really like a full circle of what the whole company team approach to business looked like. So that was definitely, that's, I've really loved to see that growth. Um, you know, not only like as your business has grown, but then to be able to see that growth, like in the team members. 
Awesome. So, and did you feel that that was helpful because they were also like on the front lines, like doing that work, like for us? Yeah, exactly. And just to be able to see, uh, you know, like it's one thing for somebody to like teach it and be like, okay, well you should be doing this thing. But it's another to like see it actually happening in somebody else's business, especially somebody who's teaching you how to do the thing. So that's always been my biggest thing with when it comes to management or like leaders or whatever is that they stand up there and they're like, oh, well, you know, you should be, you know, working 20 gazillion hours a week. And then yet they go home at, you know, two, three o'clock in the afternoon and we're still sitting here at our desk at six o'clock at night. So it's that same concept of, um, you know, seeing leaders like do the thing that they're like telling you that you should do. And so for me, that's been huge. Awesome. So why do you think coaching with me is second to none? Um, I mean, I think all around it's, it's been the support, but then it's been like really the, the mindset stuff that we do and really just really getting to the root of the problem. So you know, like we might start out with, um, I think one of the, one of them actually, which ironically, this is one of the topics, but one of them was like, I don't want to have any more, like, I don't want to hire anybody anymore. Like, I just, I don't want anybody on my team anymore. Cause I had hired, I had brought people on and, um, and I, it got to the conversation of like, well, I just don't want to have anybody anymore. Like, I just, I, I you know, I want to be solo again. And so that ended up leading to like a whole deeper conversation of like how I was feeling about my business, you know, how I was feeling about life, um, you know, what was going on like with my job. Um, so it wasn't just a question of like hiring people, but really it was a deeper conversation of how I was feeling like other places. So that definitely has been different. So instead of having a coach say like, okay, so this is your problem. And then addressing just that, but really just trying to get like to the root of the problem, like what all is going on. Um, and you definitely keep picking away at it. Like you don't really let it go. <laughs> so I remember that's... it all somehow. I don't know how. I think that's my superpower. Cause if you're, if I see you doing that, then like three months down the line, if I'm seeing the same pattern again, I'm like somehow remember it. And I'm like, here we go again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, and that's definitely, it, it takes a different type of a coach to be able to um, lovingly, you know, pick away at your shit and, and be able to call you out on your, your bullshit. And, um, and then just be able to appreciate it at the end of the day. I know people always say like, you'll always be mad at your coach. I don't think I've ever been mad at you. Like, like not like mad, mad, but like, uh, yeah. you know, like, um, I, I really feel like everything is just, it's just all come from a big place of love. And I think that's where you've taken the time to really connect with each one of us. So even though we are in a group setting, um, somehow you've been able to create community enough to be able to connect with each one, one of us to understand what's going on, you know, on these different levels of like our business and our personal life to be able to understand and then help coach us through the different things we're going through. So it's different than just being in this like giant group uh, and and you're just kind of like you get a 15 minute hot seat and then it's just like your one question gets answered. Um, so I definitely say like, what's different about this program is that it just goes so much deeper than here's the material and here's a 15 minute hot seat mm, every week yeah. or every other week. Exactly. So tell us a little bit about like, what kinds of results has this coaching style, this like way of teaching and like all of this, like what has it kinds of results have you been able to get from this? So um, I've definitely say my business is in a total different place. So I have been able to be empowered enough to transition my business model, um, really my messaging um, and just how I operate my business. So like, you know, where I was only doing bookkeeping services, now I'm offering you know, coaching other people, I'm doing more networking, just the different things that I've done. So like my business as a whole has completely changed and I've, and I feel so good about it. So, um, I have three team members right now. 
<laughs> I, it makes me like, I'm just like, wow, like I've been able to empower, be empowered enough to have three people that, you know, I can come, I can go to and say like, Hey, like we're doing this thing and just, just have this team of people and that are just rallied around, um, to support the business. Yeah. And that's all from the, from the place a year and a half ago where you were like, I'm not even hired. Like she's crazy. <laughs> no, I was like, there's no way. Uh, uh-uh. uh. Like I can, yeah. I was like, I can barely like get myself to a place of, um, doing any of this stuff. And, you know, kind of a side note. So this is a funny story. So like, I now kind of talk about, um, my relationship with Canva and how, um, I correlate it to like, if I'm in Canva, I will call my VA. If I'm, I find myself scrolling through Canva, I will call my VA or send her a message and I'll tell her that I need a meeting. Like, like, you know, you go to an alcohol's anonymous (laughs) meeting. I need a meeting because I'm avoiding doing the thing and I'm in scrolling in Canva looking for a graphic. So these are the types of things that I just don't even do anymore. I don't, I don't create graphics. I don't have like this like giant social media strategy now. I mean, these are the things that like I rely on other people to help me with that has completely changed the way that I think about business now as before I I was in like, I remember spending in the beginning of my business, I remember spending like a half a day on trying to like get my website to link to something or whatever. And now I'm just like, no, you call a person and you like have somebody else do it. Um, but yeah, I, I, when I'm, I find myself scrolling in Canva for graphics or pictures, then I've told my VA, I'm like, okay, I I need a meeting. For, for other business owners that are avoiding the thing because I'm in Canva right now. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's so funny because people will say, well, I just can't afford, like, it sounds so great, but I just can't even afford to hire someone to take care of it. Right. Of course I have to spend half a day linking to my website, but you don't ever look at the fact that if you're spending half a day linking to your website, then you're definitely not doing the thing, right? Then you're definitely not doing any sales activities. You're not like getting out there and promoting your business, which I mean, it is a problem, (laughs) right? Yeah. And here's the thing too, is one thing that I've noticed is that that's really all just a reason to stay stuck. Mm, It's all just, if, if you are, if you are doing your own graphics and you're not a graphic person. Like, I mean, like if you're spending a half a day doing this stuff, that's creating a situation where it's keeping you stuck on purpose. Like you're keeping yourself stuck on purpose because you're not willing to stop doing the things that are not like making you money. So not doing the sales activities, not connecting with your community, like not doing the things that are your superpower. That's what's keeping you stuck. And so those are the types of things that we've learned in coaching and that I've been able to step into is like, why is this happening right now? Like, why am I not in the place that I want to be at? Well, it's because I'm doing a bunch of shit that I shouldn't be doing. It's not driving my business forward. So Mm -hmm. when people say like, I can't afford it, you can't afford not to. Um, I like literally just had a conversation with a VA who is trying to get her client to get bookkeeping services. And this is the exact same conversation. I gave them a rate and I was like, you realize like I gave you a rate at 20% lower. When you leave me, you're going to go probably get a higher rate just because like, you know, whatever. And the rate's not even the issue. But the point that I was making to her is like, you're, if you wait till the end of the tax year, then you're going to spend like that much more money. You're probably going to get a, a crap, you know, services because most tax people are completely booked right now. You're putting yourself at the bottom of the rung. And the whole point was like, you can't afford not to do something now. Right. And so it's really the same thing in our business that we want to get stuck in this space of like, well, I can't afford it. And really turning the conversation around to how can I afford this? How can I make this happen? And when you can do that, that's when you're ready to step into the CEO place. Yeah. 
And we teach you ways that you can do it on very low budget or even no budget if you have Yeah, I mean, I started with an intern. I mean, Mm -hmm. I did not believe you when you were like, yeah, I have like interns and they do stuff. And I was like, yeah, but interns aren't going to give a shit with, you know, your business, blah, blah, blah. That's not true at all. Like my underlying beliefs stopped me again, underlying thing. My (laughs) underlying beliefs was stopping me from getting help in my business. So these are all things that, you know, we've been able to peel back the layers of the onion on to realize that you can't afford not to. Totally. Um, And how have you felt as a result of these changes that you've made? I mean, I definitely feel way more empowered. I feel like I have the ability to show up as a leader, whereas before I, I did not see myself as a leader, as a CEO. I just saw myself as a task doer and I just couldn't step into that place of like, I can be a badass empowered CEO and, you know, have other people, you know, want to work on my business and be appreciative that we're helping me with my business. I just saw this as being just another thing like, Oh, just another thing. I have to hire somebody, but it's really been like, you know, it's creating relationships too. I mean, as I've brought team members into my business, I've been able to create relationships. I've been able to teach them things that they probably wouldn't have else learned because of the mindset work that I'm doing. So I've been able to pass on like my things that I'm learning with mindset and money and, and how to do things in business so that they can like take this. Maybe they just end up going to a nine to five job and that's what they do. But maybe they realize like, Hey, this is for me. Like I want to have my own business too. So those levels of impact have been, um, have been awesome that just to be able to see that transformation and to be able to see that like, wow, I can be that person and to be able to step into that place. So that's been pretty like transformative for me to just be able to like reflect back to myself. I'm like, wow, like look at how far I've come because I definitely look now and I even tell my husband, I'm like, I'm not a new business owner anymore. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like. I've kind of stepped over the the bridge of like, I, you know, I, I'm not like, I don't have to get caught up in all these like, oh, what's the graphic and this whole social media thing and just all these things right now that I'm seeing so much of like how to plan your content and, and all these things. And it's like, I'm not like at that new place anymore. And mm-hmm. so that's been like an interesting place to be able to see that like I've kind of stepped over that bridge and I definitely was not there when I first started and that was only a year ago yeah and when you were when you first started how long had you already been in business I had already had my business up and running like a year and a half and I'd already invested over ten thousand dollars in other coaches yeah so I think it's so interesting, right? Because you weren't a, really, technically speaking, you weren't new then either. But it was like what you're saying, that internal identity shift, right? Yeah. Like that is so much more powerful. Because technically, a year and a half in, you're not really new either, right? But like you just hadn't flipped inside yet. And I know for me, when that happened, it was a big aha moment because I was doing the same thing. I still... I was in my business for several years and was still considering myself new. Like my identity hadn't shifted because I was still doing all like the lower level. I mean, I hate to call it lower level, right? But like basic tasks that other people could be doing. Yeah. Not in your zone of genius. <laughs> totally. Totally. Um, and then uh, why has it been important for you to attain this? Like why, like what's your driver? sounds like impact, but anything else? I really want to be able to transform how people, how people look at money, how people see money, um, how they interact with money. I really want to create more of a dialogue um, with people and being able to just step into that space and, and say like, yes, I can help other people. So yeah, that's the impact. But then being able to, um, you know, quit my job. Um, I I mean, and, and and really when I think about quitting my job, I think about like being able to open that space up for somebody else. So I don't really look at it. I, and I never used to see it like that, but really just being able to like open this space up for somebody else who's like excited about having a nine to five job so that then I can step into like my role of being a CEO and a leader. Um, so I think that that's a big thing. 
Beautiful. Um, and how has like really stepping into this leadership role helped you in your next adventure in business and life? So from here, honestly, I, I can see the potential of where this can all happen now. Um, before I, I've never been like, oh, I want to be seven figures or anything. And I don't necessarily think that I'm there, that I really want to be in that million dollar space, but that's just not anything I I just want right now, but I can see the potential of where like it can go. I mean, as far as like, there's a lot of things I want to do. And I was just sharing with my new team member, like, I want to write a book and I want to do this and I want to do that. Like, there's just a lot of things that I'd like to do. And now I can finally see the potential of like how that can all happen because I can create these processes. I can ask for help. I can, you know, do the things um, instead of just, you know, being a one man show. Is there anything else that you think would be helpful for listeners or watchers of the video to, um, to know before we wrap things up? I mean, I guess the biggest thing is like, one thing that I've learned from Mariana is you, you have to ask yourself the question every time you invest in something is how committed are you to the thing? So it's not a matter of like how much money does it cost? Like I literally just invested in a $47 thing last week. And I asked myself the question, like, it's not about the money. It's about the commitment. Like, am I committed to doing the boot camp or the training or whatever it was? So that's really what you have to ask yourself is that like, how committed am I to doing the thing? Because underneath all of it, I will tell you, it's not about the money. It really, really, truly is not about the money. And being in this place of like not having to worry about money so much because I have grown my business, I have grown my career. Um, it's it's not about the money. Like you, we we all think like, oh, well, when I do this, like when I make this much money or when I do this, um, I'm gonna be able to do dot da 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 da. Or I'm gonna be this that or the other. It's it's really all a lie. Um, it doesn't happen that way. Um, you have to be that person now and you have to find the way to make things happen now. And so I would say to you, like, if you're on the fence because, uh, because of the money, um, I would encourage you to go deeper on that and see like, is it really the money? Is it really about the money? Because nine times out of 10, it's not about the money. It's about like an underlying fear of just stepping into that leadership position. Yeah. Um, because that's really what I've been able to do. And really everyone that's taken the program has been able to just step into that CEO place. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. We did work on that with you, right? Like you had like your best year last year and feeling like, oh my gosh, like how, what was that like? Cause I don't think everyone really gets this. It was almost like when, when I was explaining in the beginning where I like arrived at my career, I was like, that's it. Like, here, mm-hmm. here's the thing, like, I will tell you, like, not a whole lot changed. On a certain level, I still worried about money. Like, I ha- mm-hmm. had more money. And, you know, like, we're in a place now, like, financially, where I, I've never, like, this is, like, financially, like, I mean, we're not rolling a dough or anything, but, like, to be at a stable financial situation it's like wow. this time, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, and, and it's like, wow. But if you don't ever stop, like when you have a little bit of money and you never stop and like give gratitude to your money, or you never look at your money and you never do all these things, then you have more money. It's the same thing. Like you still worry the same amount. You still have the same habits, you know, whatever it is. And to be able to realize that like life didn't really change that much just because I had more money. Mm -hmm. That's been like the most huge transformation um, that I've had over this last year. We, um, we purchased uh, a brand new vehicle, uh, a larger vehicle, a a truck. We purchased a 250 um, Ford F250 four by four. And I got a, I got a super awesome deal on it. And when I drove it home, I was like, wow, like, this is amazing to be able to just go to the dealership and like, just purchase a vehicle, um, like this, this was like, wow, a dream come true. 
but when I looked around at like how my life was, as far as like how I interacted with people, like just all of it, nothing really changed in my life. Like I got a bigger truck. I'll be honest with you. Like I got a bigger truck, but my life was still the same. I still went home and felt the same. I still felt the same about my relationships, my job, you know, it's like everything was for the most part, everything was still the same. Now, yes, little things have changed, but the point I'm making is that you have to start making these changes right now because along the way, you're going to start to grow. And if you're not growing with that growth, then it's not ever going to help you. Like you're, you're just going to get there and then you're going to be depressed or whatever. But I don't know. I mean, I, you've probably experienced something similar as like a hundred percent. Like I had the same thing and also did it in corporate. So climb, 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 climb. This is great. And what? Like, this isn't even that good. What's going on? I thought it was a glorious moment and it never was. And yeah, like there was going to be like unicorns flying down and like, you know, there was going to be angels and they're going to, da da, you've arrived. Yeah. And no, and like, I still clean up poop every day for my children, right? Like, it's just like, like nothing changes it's your brain, right? Like you have to train your brain to, like you said, like look at the gratitude and appreciate things that are basic, right? Like most of my gratitude journaling has been things that are like free, right? Like most of what I am grateful for is like this little doggy I have right here, right? Like (laughs) it's like the moments I have with my kids, like it's all free, right? So yeah. And, and if we're not making habits of that now, like you said, or really like present to that now, because we're trying to reach so high that like, we're like, well, I'll enjoy things back when I get there, then we're going to get there and feel disappointed. Yeah. And, and and that's definitely something that ha- I've become more aware of. And I started reading the book, The 4-Hour Work Week, um, and he talks about like how we just like through our twenties and our thirties and our forties, like we're growing our bit, you know, like we're doing the hustle nine to five hustle and, um, and really, and truly like in that time of our life where most of us are in the best shape of our life, like we can, you know, go out and like have energy, like our bones don't creak when we turn like, you know, 60 and 70 or whatever. And, then we get to this place where like we do all of that and all we're doing is just working, 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 working. And then we get to this place where we're 60 and 70 years old and we retire, but we've used up the best time of our life, which is right now, like in our twenties, thirties and forties, or even, you know, it doesn't really matter what age, but the point is, is like these years of where we have, like our kids are young, you know, Mm -hmm. we have the energy, you know, just all of these things. And we use up that time by working instead of like, no, going, like taking these vacations, you know, finding these opportunities to, you know, live in different countries or enjoy time with our family. I was coaching a client last week and she was telling me about how she was like working, working, working. And then she realized like she had to stop and then realize that Like I'm doing my own business. Like what I'm doing here is so that I can go spend time with my kids. But then when my kids come in and they bother me, I tell them to go away. Yep. So having that realization of like, you're doing this so you can spend time with your kids. Like, so you can be more present with your kids. Like, so you can be more present with your family. But then we get caught in this space where we just work constantly. And it's like, well, what the hell are we doing it for then? Yeah. And I coach so many people that then like they're with their kid and then they're like on their phone or thinking about the business and yeah. unable to really be present. Right. So it's like really the, that's for me, the time blocking has been the most helpful for that, but yeah, but exactly like what is the point and then figure out what the point is for you and live that now, no matter where you are. Yeah. Because honestly, underneath all of it, it's, it's, there's all just, it's all a self-worth and a fear issue most of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, just not believing in yourself. And, and if you're looking for help with that, to be able to like move through these things so that you can actually have like a badass business. Um, this has been the program that's helped me do it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. 
Thank you so much yes. for sharing your experience. And I, I'm glad you said about the commitment too, because it's so important, right? Like whoever, wherever you are, when you're watching this, like if you want to join the program, look at your commitment because we do require that you step up your commitment and be committed to yeah. the program. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing too. Like it doesn't matter whether you invest in a $5 item or you invest in a $5,000 item, whatever it is that you're investing in, like how committed are you? And it's funny, like, this is literally what I teach my clients now with money because they always come to me and they're like, well, how do you know that an investment's a good investment? And obviously there's the practical things of like your budget, blah, blah, blah. But then like underneath it, it's like, well, do, how committed are you to the thing? Like, are you going to show up every week? Are you going to actually, because how many courses do we have sitting in our library? Seriously, mm -hmm. how many courses? Mm -hmm. And if you're not committed to it, it's just going to sit there and it's going to just, it's a waste of everybody's time, energy, and effort. Right. And also that was my personal commitment. It's like, I don't want this to be something that sits there. So like we've hired coaches to help you and stay accountable. And in, I don't know if you know this, Heather, but for the next round, like the accountability coaches, like if you miss accountability calls, you're, you have the potential to be kicked out. <laughs> We're oh, doing shoot. it. We're doing it. Uh -oh. So yeah. So it's going to be really, I mean, it's, we've all, always been really into like holding everybody accountable, but we're also making sure that commitment piece is there. Otherwise, why are you paying for it? Right? Like what's the point? So that's well, how. Well, and that is what makes this program different too, is that the people that are there aren't like in the program, like to just, okay, we're just going to sit around and bitch about like how our week went. And I, I will say that too, about the coaching calls is that it's not like we just, we're just going to complain and bitch about like life or whatever. It's like serious, like, okay, what is going on? And then get to like the underlying thing that's happening because nine times out of 10, like, you know, you talk about it all the time, like what one person has going on nine times out of 10, somebody else is having a similar thing happening and it's helpful for everybody. So, you know, that's really what raises the bar for the whole program is that we all are, sh we're all showing up in the room for the same reason. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you so much for chatting and sharing your experience, Heather. Where can people find you? Cause you have so much goodness going on about money mindset, about everything helping people with their finances, um, the practical and the spiritual. So where can they find you? Yeah. So I mostly hang out, um, in Facebook and Facebook group. I have a group called more than just taxes. And, um, it came to me one day when I was like, I just want people to know me more. Like when you think of an accountant, you're like, Oh, they do taxes. And I was like, no, no, no I do more than just taxes. <laughs> so, I have a Facebook group that I created. I'm very active in there doing trainings and just different things. So um, that's the main place you can find me. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And we'll link to it in the show notes for this episode. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.